What's up everyone, how you doing? Blue Nerd here and welcome to 5 Minecraft Path Designs. Now guys, this is going to be part of a brand new series where each week I will be taking 5 designs and building them in Minecraft and showcasing them with some ideas for you to give you a little bit of inspiration and ideas for building. Now I want you guys to be a part of this, so if you guys could let me know in the comments what would you like to see 5 designs for next. So for instance guys, we want to keep this in moderation, okay, so something like maybe 5 bridge designs, 5 starter house designs, 5 x five, 5 house designs, you know, something along those lines. Please don't give me something like 5 castle designs or something like that because that will be impossible to do. So just keep it in moderation guys and if you could let me know in the comments that would be much appreciated. But with that being said, let's jump on and take a look at path design number one. Okay guys, path design number one is a pretty basic design and it's something that I use fairly often and probably something that a lot of people do quite often. It's a fairly simple design but it works really well for areas where you have maybe some fields, maybe a small little town where you haven't got too much built up stuff going on and houses are spaced fairly sort of a good distance apart and it creates a really nice little pathway joining everything together. Now for this one guys, I've gone ahead and I've laid down some grass puff and I've made it look quite rough as you can see we've kind of made a bit of a jagged curve. Now guys with your pathways, please don't keep them straight. The worst thing you can do is keep them straight. Make them curved even if it's just a little bit curved as you can see like I've got and then just go ahead and rough up the edges because it just makes it look so much more natural. Straight paths never work and keeping paths with all of the same blocks look very boring. So try and mix it up a little bit. As you can see, we've got grass path, we've got some cool dirt, we've got some brown concrete powder, which works really well with the grass path. And then we've also got a couple of bits of spruce planks that are just sitting around on the edges here and there. And again, we don't need to go too crazy with this, just a few of them dotted around. And then let your grass kind of just now and again, just sort of fade into the edge of the pathways and you can also mix in some mossy cobblestone as well just to give a little bit of extra green into the ground there just to make it look like there's maybe a little bit of grass kind of growing through and I think this design works really well in many cases adding these little ruined walls I think also works really well so here I've just used a cobblestone slab and as you can see we kind of made a bit of a ruined look so we're kind of just jagging it up and down a little bit making some little shapes in there you know, not keeping anything straight, making sure we're kind of popping back and forward between it all, leaving some empty spaces and filling those empty spaces with some leaves and some tall grass, even some flowers and stuff like that. And this works great for separating your fields, you know, it really makes it look nice to separate your fields with a design like this. Now the other thing you can do as well guys is add in little sections of fences like this. I think it looks nice in small sections rather than loads of it all at once, just little sections. And then just pop a little lantern on there just to make sure your pathway is lit up. And I think a design like this works so well, you know. And another thing you can do, guys, is grow yourself a basic oak tree. Yeah, just a small basic oak tree. And then get yourself some fences. Go ahead, just kind of break out some of your leaves at the bottom and curve it out. Add in some fences like I have here. You can even hang a lantern from it. And then all you want to do is place some leaves on the top of it. And what you want to do is just kind of curve it upwards. As you can see, we just kind of gave this really a bit of a point, you know, almost like the way you would do a roof, but with the leaf blocks. And, you know, it just creates a nice kind of little bushy tree there. It's not the best tree, but it looks appealing. You know, it has a nice look to it. It's got a decent shape. And I think sometimes when we build trees, we overlook them too much because from a pathway and you're walking past like this, a tree, this, this tree looks really nice, you know, because you're not overly paying too much attention to it. So we don't need to make trees look super fancy. They've just got to look like a tree. That's the most important thing. If it looks like a tree, it works. Don't be too sort of um, too negative on the way the tree looks. It hasn't got to be perfect. Nothing's got to be perfect. It's just got to look nice. And I think that's the kind of design that we go for. And in this area, something like this, I think works perfect. Now, with that being said, guys, let's take a look at design number two. 
Okay guys, pathway design number two kind of goes in with a little bit more of a built up area. As you can see, we've got a little house here and this is a very basic little house that I've done here. Guys, nothing too crazy. Um, but the pathway is the main thing that we worked on here. So as you can see guys, for the pathway, I've kept this one kind of more of a complete path. And again, as you can see, we've got a slight curve going in here. You know, we're not keeping it straight. We're making sure there's some indentations going in and out so that the pathway doesn't look flat and straight. Now, for the pathway itself, I've gone ahead, I've used cobblestone, gravel, some mossy cobblestone, stone bricks, and even some little bits of stone. And these work really well together as a path. And as you can see, it kind of just gives that nice, because these have all got a very similar tone to them, they just blend very well together. Now, one of the other things I like to do as well is sometimes I get like cobblestone stairs or even stone brick stairs, and then we can put a water bucket down and waterlog the blocks now. Since 1.13, uh, we can waterlog blocks now, and we can make like these, which look like little puddles in the street. And this just works so well, you know, that you imagine that the area just rained, you get these little puddles build up, and you'd probably get a lot of these around. Now, I would go spare in making these little puddles. You don't want them dotted all over the place because it starts to look a little bit unrealistic. It looks too much. And I've probably put more than I should on here, but it's purely just to showcase it. I would normally put these just one here and there, you know, very sparingly through this sort of, through a city or through a village. But overall, guys, I think this design works really well. I like to break it up, so making some little walls like this works really well. You can section it to make like a little garden. So if, for instance, where the grass is here, if you had a big house, for instance, this could be a little garden here. So, you know, go ahead and make use of that garden. Add in some bushes, a little pond, some flowers. Using things like these cobblestone slabs and a cool stirt here around a pond works so well for blocks. You know, they just kind of create a nice bit of shape and put them inside the edge of the pond here as well. So just to create that little bit of a realistic kind of shape in there. Like there's some rocks underneath. And uh, yeah, I think it just works really well. So I really like this design. And think that just adding in that little bit of detail just adds so much to a build. You know, again, adding in little things like this around on the sides by houses, little flower pots. You know, just using some trap doors. You can use any trap doors. They haven't got to be the oak ones. And then just go ahead, adding in some dirt with some flowers on it. Just adds a nice little bit of life to your walkways. Adding in little areas like this where you have a little fence gate. So you've got a little gate here. And maybe in here you can have like a little garden. I haven't done too much with this. Just thrown down some bone meal. A couple of little trees in here as you can see. And then a little bench just to make it just look, you know, just presentable. It just looks nice. And it's a little kind of a little sort of thing that you just catches your eye as you're walking past. And again, going with the trees, guys, they are very simple. There is nothing sort of sort of major about these designs. It's just using a few fences and then just adding some leaves. This tree here, for instance, this one right in front of me. I give it a point at the top and then I try to make it a little bit thicker at the bottom here so that it gets that kind of triangular sort of shape. And then over here, this one here, I've just kind of whacked a load of fences together and then just dotted a load of leaves over the top of it and then just dangled a couple of them down. And overall, I think it looks, you know, it looks okay. It's not great. It's not the best, but it's certainly, you know, it doesn't, like I say, it doesn't have to be. No trees look perfect. You know, they're, they're not all perfect. So, you know, having a few strange looking shapes, trees or ones that don't quite look right, isn't going to make sort of anything look bad. You know, if anything is going to add a bit of detail and a little bit of a change to the area. So don't be afraid to mess around with some things just to add in some little bits and bobs that just catch the eye as you're walking past. And like I said, don't be overly crazy about trying to perfect them because when you try and perfect them, you're never, you will never end up happy with it. Okay guys, so that is path design number two. Let's take a look at path design number three. Okay guys, pathway number three is actually in a desert and this is probably one of the harder sort of biomes to create a pathway in, especially if you're in a very open area because trying to add in those little bits of detail is very hard because you can't get many blocks that blend in too great with the sand. So for this one guys, I actually tried to keep this fairly natural. So we've gone ahead and used like the main area of the path with sandstone and birch planks. And we've spread them out all the way through to create our path. Again, keeping it curved guys, very important, keeping a nice curved pathways. And this is the base of the actual path. 
Now, doing it like that looked very plain and boring. So what I've done to add in a bit of color, we've used some brown concrete, cool dirt, and then some spruce planks and just added them in sort of dotted throughout. And as you can see, it just allows us to see the where the pathway is without overdoing it. I've seen some people who have placed like spruce planks or cool dirt down as an entire pathway in a desert and it really don't look right. It looks too much. It doesn't look like it's very natural. So doing it like this where it's just dotted through it creates a very natural looking pathway and I think it just fits. It really fits with a the desert theme and just works just about right without overdoing it. Now, to add a little bit of detail to the sides of the paths, I think using birch fences with some lanterns on works pretty good and it helps light up your path. Adding in some cactus and some dead bushes is also a nice way to decorate the paths. Little sand dunes by just building up little sort of little mound mounds of um, sand like this, adding in some dead bushes and cactus on top of them just adds a nice little bit of detail to your pathways. You know, just scatter them in and about as you can see, like I have and it really just brings the area to life. Adding in a little tree here, as you can see, I've got the birch fence. I've used a lantern to hang from one of the birch fences and then the acacia leaves here just to create a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a tree that looks like it's, it's sort of not dead, but the leaves look like they're very crisp on there. So they fit in with the desert nicely. And I think that works really well. Again, I would go sparing with the trees because you don't, don't get too many of them in deserts. But I think the occasional one here and there certainly works. And I've got to say, guys, this is actually one of my favorite looking paths. I really like the way this one has turned out because I'm not usually a fan of building in deserts. Um, but this path really does inspire me to do something in a desert. Anyway, guys, that's about it for path number three. Let's take a look at path number four. Okay guys, for path number four, I wanted to try something different. So I thought maybe something like a raised path would work really good in some areas. So for this one, guys, we just raised up a pathway. So for instance, the pathway itself is made up of mostly cobblestone, gravel and stone bricks. Okay, so that is the main made that made up part of the path. And then we've just added in a couple of bits of cool dirt just to add a little bit of kind of, I don't know, just a little bit of a different tone in there just to kind of break it all up. Then down the sides here, I've gone ahead and I've used a combination of stone brick stairs and cobblestone stairs just to make it look a little bit more sort of uh, realistic and give it a little bit of texture. And we've just wrapped them all the way around the edge here. And we've done the same on the opposite side over here. As you can see, we've got them stepping down and I really like this pathway. I'm not usually a fan of raised pathways, but this one turned out much better than I expected. Now, adding in little pathways like this as well, you can add in nice little details like this. So we can have like a little gate to walk through where we've got a stone brick wall with some spruce fences. We bring the spruce fence over one, put a fence gate in the middle with some spruce trap doors on the top and then a couple of lanterns. And we've got a nice little gateway. Now again guys, on the side, adding in a little bit of details on your pathways, very important. So rough up your edges with a little bit of cool dirt. As you can see, we've got some cool dirt in there and I think that really does add a nice little bit of detail to the edge. Put in some little lights, so some spruce fences and some lanterns on top. Over here, we've added in some bone meal and some bushes. We've got a flower pot with some bamboo in it and then a acacia leaf block on top. And it creates this little kind of almost like a miniature tree. And I think these just look really cool. Again, over here, guys, we've got another tree that we've done using the same thing with the spruce fences and the oak leaves, just to create a little small tree and then a bunch of bone meal and some leaves underneath. And again, just make sure you use it all around the area and just add in those little highlights. And I think this one works really good, guys. This could be used in many situations. It has a little bit of an oriental feel to it, but kind of also you could use this in a little kind of uh, plains village or something like that if you wanted. I think it would work really well. Anyway, guys, this one is pretty much simple. That is pretty much it for this design. So let's move on and take a look at path design number five. Okay guys, path number five is something that I've used in my new Japanese village that I've started building and guys, I love this design. The Japanese style is so nice and there is so many cool features you can make to it to make the area feel really peaceful and really tranquil and I absolutely love it. So for this one guys, it's really simple. What I've done, I started by making a little raised platform on an edge where we've got a pathway. So as you can see, I've put my stripped acacia wood down the bottom all the way across. 
On top of it, we've got the acacia slab just to finish off that edge. Now on level with the ground, I've used spruce wood to divide up the pathway so that you've got a nice clear sort of vision of the pathway and the colors of it. And then to the other side here, we've made another raised area. So we've gone ahead and raised up that acacia plank, uh, the stripped acacia wood all the way around this edge here, put the, strip, uh, put the acacia slabs on top and then made like a little garden area on top. Now I've kept the garden area on top here, just very simple because we've only got a very little bit of room here to really play with. And I didn't want to overdo it, but I think it works really well. And then down on the lower levels here, adding in little areas like this where you've got a bunch of like red flowers or a bunch of one particular flower in a little field, I think looks so nice. And then I really like these little ideas for like little street lamps. So we've got a cobblestone wall, some acacia fences with an acacia slab on top. Using the acacia trap doors all the way around on the slab. And then some lanterns underneath just creates a really nice little kind of oriental Japanese sort of styled um, lantern uh, nightlight. And I think it works really cool. And I've dotted another one over here. But I've got to say, guys, I really love this one. The Japanese feel is I'm really inspired by it at the moment. So there's going to be a bunch of Japanese style builds coming very soon. Now, with that being said, guys, that is pretty much it for design number five. I did go ahead and make one more path design because I got a little bit carried away. So let's go ahead and show that. But in future, guys, this series is going to be five designs only. Okay, guys, path design number six would work really well in a Nordic village. And I really like this one. It's a very simple pathway. So the pathway itself is mainly gravel and cobblestone all the way through here. And that makes it nice and simple to put together. Again, keeping a little curve in and out here and there on the pathways. I've used a bit of gravel, a bit of coarse dirt rather, just to um, break things up and add a little bit of brown in there. Seems that we're on these little farms at the side here. It kind of just makes it blend in a little bit better. Now on the side here, I've gone ahead and put in a bit of wall and this really helps kind of section off the pathways. So if you haven't got nothing to put on the pathway, if you've got a bit of open space, use a wall like this, just dotted in spaces, just to kind of break it up and make it look a little bit more interesting. As you can see, we got some cobblestone slabs down the bottom there, just making it look like the wall is supported. We got that around both sides, and then we've just made some different level of logs and stripped logs, and then put some spruce fence on top of some, and some slabs on top of the others. And yeah, it just gives it a nice little kind of feel to this area, and just adds a little bit of interest. For the lights here, we've gone for something very similar to the Japanese style lights. So we've gone ahead and used a cobblestone, spruce fences. We've got a spruce slab on top with some spruce trapdoors on all sides underneath those trapdoors we've got a spruce fence with the lanterns and it creates these really cool looking lights i really like the way these look and it blends in perfectly and again added in a little bit of interest guys you don't necessarily have to make use of things like this but they do make the pathways look interesting isn't and that is adding little small farms like this you know, they don't need to be usable. It don't have to be something that you're going to be using and picking and stuff like that. But they do certainly add a bit of detail down the side of a pathway. And they, it just works really well and just creates a little highlight of different colors. You know, like the berry bushes, we've got the red, we've got the orange from the carrots, the green from the tops of them. And it just works really well, guys. It just, it just fits the area. And guys, that just about wraps it up for my five, well, six pathway designs. And uh, yeah, that's about it, guys. Now, I hope these have been useful to you. If they have, don't forget to smash that like button. And please remember to let me know in the comments what you would like to see for my next five designs. Anyway, guys, like I said, that's just about it. So we're going to leave it just there. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, then please consider subscribing. Just don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. But for now, this is Blue Nerd signing out, and I will catch you guys in the next one.